Welcome to the Bible Truth of Our Hymns. We're going to look at a hymn from a hymnal and check it to see if that hymn is biblically sound or not. There are stanzas in the hymns or words that are not correct from the Bible. We need to see that in a church where there are three types of people. Number one, they're saved and serving and loving the Lord. Number two, they're saved and they're worldly. And number three, lastly, they're lost men. Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account. Are we proposing men and women in the church to sin by the hymns that are chosen? We will examine some, but not all, in this study. We will set a groundwork that the sin, that the sin, the hymn that we missed, you can be able to check for yourself and study yourself to see is this hymn that I like correct now not all the hymns that we're going to look at will be wrong many will be great and wonderful hymns and a few will have to be is it really proper will it glorify God or will it cause a man to sin When we look at the biblical truth of our hymns today, crown him with many crowns. And we have seven verses. I'm going to read them. Then we'll get into the notes. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon the throne, his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthems drown, all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king throughout all eternity. Crown him the son of God before the worlds began. And ye who tread where he had trod, crown him the son of man, who every grief has known that, ring, that rings the human breast and take and bears them for his own, that all in him may rest. I'm trying not to sing it. Crown him the Lord of love, Behold the hands in his side, those wounds yet visible above in beauty glorified. No angel in the sky can fully bear that sight, but downward bends his burning eye at mystery so bright. Crown him the Lord of life who triumphed over the grave, and who is victorious in the strife for those who came to save. His glory is how we sing, who died and rose on high. Who died eternal life to bring and lives that death may die. Crown him Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways. From pole to pole that wars may cease and all be prayer and praise. His reign shall know, his reign shall know no end. And round his pierced feet fair flowers of paradise extend their fragrance ever sweet. Crown him Lord of heaven, one with the Father known, one with the Spirit though, and given from yonder glorious throne. To thee be endless praise, for thou for, for us has died. Be thou, O Lord, through endless days adored and magnified. Crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time, creator of all rolling spheres, in eternity sublime. To all hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise and glory shall not fail throughout eternity. Now, let's look at this hymn. Let's look at the truth. The music is by Matthew Bridges, stanza one and four through seven. Godfrey Thring, stanza two and three. Matthew Bridges 
a book entitled The Roman Emperor under Constantine the Great in 1828, his purpose being exi to examine the real origin of certain papal superstitions. As a result of the influence of John Henry Newman and the Oxford movement, Bridges became a Roman Catholic in 1848 and spent the latter part of his life in Canada. Though raised as an Anglican, Bridges converted to Roman Catholicism in 1848. Kind of interesting. But there's more. The full 12 verses of the song, which has two six verse versions, sharing the same melody and theme, but different wording and theological points of interest, are as follows. The first six stanzas are those written by Bridges, and the second six written by Thring. Verses 1, 4, 5, 6, and 9, Matthew Bridges. The Passion of Jesus, 1852. Verses 2 and 3, God Three Things, Hymns and Sacred Lyrics, 1874. Godfrey graduated from Bellon College, Oxford, England. He was ordained in the Anglican Church. Anglican and Roman Catholicism. Kaya Foundation. Reverend H. W. Hutton asked Godfrey Thing to rewrite several verses of this well-known hymn to correct the theology. So when we look at Crown Him with Many Crowns, it's been corrected to get it right. But then again, we still see the smell, the spices of Roman Catholicism. This had the verses starting with crown him with many with crowns of gold, the Son of God, the Lord of Light, the Lord of Life, the Lord of Lords, and a new final stanza based on Bridges' use of the Lord of Heaven. It was decided to keep the two versions separate, but published them both in 1874 in Thring's hymn book, Hymns and Sacred Lyrics. Thring's rewording was also published in the Church of England hymn book. Now we have the seven. We don't have all twelve in my hymn book. So, taken from Revelation four ten, and the four and twenty four the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying. So that's where the, the crown, crown it with many crowns. The elders are taking their crowns and casting them before the feet. Revelation 22, 1, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, preceding now the throne of God and of the Lamb, capital L. The Lamb does have a heavenly throne. He has also many crowns, 1912 of Revelation. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. It's the second advent. Jesus comes, not any pope, to set up a Jewish kingdom, not a Catholic kingdom. So he is crowned with many crowns, and crowns are cast before him. It's the Lamb, capital L. Now the music, you cannot find any singing in heaven since the fall of the heavenly choir director, Lucifer, Ezekiel 28 and Luke 2.13. And suddenly, there was, an, there was with the angel a multitude of a heavenly host praising God and saying, saying, not singing. There is no singing unto Revelation 5.9. They sung a new song. Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. The, the singing that picks back up in heaven is about the gospel of Jesus Christ, how he suffered and died, according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's when it picks back up. 
Lucifer, Exodus, uh, Ezekiel 28, was the choir director that sat above God. One of the beasts of the fish and serpent. He's the dragon. Played his music so all can sing to God. And then he fell of his beauty, of his wisdom. A song as it was a new song before the throne, before the beast, and the elders. And no man could learn that song. But the 144,000, which were deemed from the earth. Revelation 15, 3, and they, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, capital L, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Revelation 4, 8, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. They rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Revelation 4, 10 and 11, the four and twenty-four elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, a God that's a creator. One of the recent popes has been quoted to say, Genesis is a myth. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Notice, saying, not singing. Yeah, you read the Old Testament singing before the fall of Lucifer, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Then you got the space and you got the gap. Genesis 1, 2. Sing of him. Can't say Jesus. Sing of Jesus. Why is it so hard in our hymnals that we can't put the name of Jesus? Since I started this, I am so amazed that I notice, and when I sing the hymns in the church, I, I look at the hymns I'm singing, and I cannot find the name of Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Acts 4.12. And in Acts 4.12 is Jesus. But we can't mention his name. King. Jesus is never king of the church. Now he will be the king of the kings. Revelation 1 when we're in the millennium. In a Jewish kingdom where he will sit on David's throne, ruling the Jewish nation as we will be kings of cities, not kings over other Christians. He's our groom. He's, he's our husband. Never a king of the church. He's the eternal Jesus Christ. And it's really hard to find that a Roman Catholic wrote this, but then again, we're reminded that Rev Reverend H.W. Hilton asked Godfrey to rewrite several verses of this well-known hymn to, create, to correct the theology. So what we have here, we had a song that was Roman Catholic, and it was changed. So what we look at here, is a hymn yeah that does belong in our hymnal but let's also be aware that there is another hymn out there crowning with many crowns that's catholic so crowning with many crowns that's his second advent the lamb capital l on his throne that's when he will come and sit upon david's throne he's crowned before he comes He's crowned with crowns on the horse on the way back. Hark how the heavenly anthems drowns all music but its own. Again, there's no singing. There's praising. Awake my soul out of the grave. Becoming alive. 
and sing of him who died for thee. We're supposed to sing about God. We're supposed to sing about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who is God and God is Jesus Christ. And hail him as a matchless king throughout all eternity. He's the king. He's the heavenly king. He's the king of the Jews. And he'll be king over new Jerusalem, the new earth, and the new heaven. Crown him the Son of God. He is the Son of God. The beloved Son of God. Before the words, worlds began. Before Genesis 1. And yet, who tread where he had trod, crowned the Son of Man. Son of God became the Son of Man. 100% man, 100% God. In the flesh. Who every grief hath known that wrings the human breast. Christ has suffered as God, as human, that all the sufferings that man has ever had, and even worse. Christ went into hell. A man that believes on the gospel of Jesus Christ that gets saved will never go to hell. So at that point, Christ has suffered more. Than what a saved man will ever suffer. He was beaten beyond knowledge. Beaten to not even identification of a human. His back was made like the furrows of a ground by a farmer. Extreme pain. Crown him the Lord of love. God is love. There is no love. Outside of God. For God is love. If you don't know God and Jesus Christ, you don't know what love is. Behold his hands inside. The wounds are still there. Thomas, reach thither. Put your finger through my hand. Thrust your fist into my side, he's, he told. Those wounds yet visible above. Always be visible. Christ will bear in his body forever those wounds that he suffered for us. In beauty glorified of salvation. No angel in the sky can fully bear that sight. They don't understand what Christ done. They don't understand pain. Crown him the Lord of life. There's no other life but by Jesus. John the Baptist said, He that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Who triumphed over the grave. Three days and three nights later, that rock was kicked over, rolled away. He's not here. He is risen. The grave has no more victory for those that believe on Jesus Christ. And rose victorious in the strife of those he came to save. Victorious. A man is a Christian by the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is a Christian. If your Jesus Christ is still nailed to a cross today, that's not Christian. Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, he ascended to the Father and seated at the right hand of the Father. He's not nailed to a cross no more. He may have the marks in his body, but he's not nailed. And he's not going to die ever again. Now a Roman Catholic will put him back on that cross, nail him to that cross, and put him in a box. So they can crow. Not my God. Not my Savior. I am rest upon a being a Christian by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Death died. The grave had no more victory when Jesus Christ came out. The Lord of peace. There is no other peace than the peace. And Jesus even said the, the worldly peace is it's temporal. It don't last. You got to pay for the worldly peace. It disappears. But the peace of God is of the Holy Spirit, of nine fruits all together. And it's not even fruits, it's one fruit. It's a singular fruit of nine love, joy, peace, patience, long suffering. 
with a power of scepter sways. He's the king. He's the ruler, the rod of iron in the millennium. From pole to pole, north to south, along the equator, that wars may cease in the millennium. And yet we are told in the Bible that there will be one more war after Satan is loose. And God burns them up, but still it's a, it's a world war when Satan gathers men and women. And then just burnt up. The new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. No more war. No more conflict. No more sins. Around his pierced feet. The feet that have been pierced for my soul, not Mary. You will find among Catholic images, Mary is stepping on that serpent. With the twelve stars above her head. That's a lie. Now I show great respect that God chose Mary to bear in her womb Jesus Christ. But she's not to be elevated as a God. She's to be elevated as a wonderful woman that could be found and could be used and Believed God by the angel Gabriel. But there's only one. Fair flowers of paradise. Fragrance so sweet. You ever think about the millennium? The Bible says the curse is removed. Everything the curse is removed in the millennium but the snake. He will still eat dust, the Bible says. You will have uh, the wolf lying down with a lamb. You'll have a child that would be able to play with animals that he couldn't play with today. And you realize when that curse is removed that Adam, because he ate that fruit which God told him not to eat of. Can you imagine a rose today? It has thorns. Thorns and thistles are the result of the curse. And if that curse is removed when Jesus Christ is seated as king in Jerusalem. On the thousand year reign of this earth, can you imagine what flowers are going to be like without the curse? Without weeds? Without thorns? Can you imagine the holiness of the fragrance of uncursed plants? We are going back into the Garden of Eden with Jesus Christ seated as king. It's going to be a marvelous, miraculous, beyond beauty that this earth saw one time before Adam and Eve sinned by the rebellion of God. Crown him the Lord of heaven. Not of works, least any man boasts. See, we're not going to heaven, and I won't be able to say, well, look how many people I got saved. Well, look at the ministries I had. Oh, look how much money you gave. Look, look who you gave your money. It's not going to be about that. When we get to heaven, it's going to be all about Jesus Christ with the nail-pierced hands, with the wound in his side, with the holes in his feet. It'll be all about the Lord of heaven, the Lamb, the capital L. Praise and honor to the Lamb. To the one that suffered and died and bled for me. One with the Father known. The Father knows that Son. The Father knows that Lamb. The Father sent that Lamb. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And yet that Son, that Lamb that God gave and knows is God himself. I'm sorry you don't have Jesus Christ who is God. And I'm sorry, you don't have a Jesus Christ who's God. You're going to be cast off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. One with the Spirit. We have a God that's three and one. One and three. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And yet, they're one. And yet, they're three. And it's incompatible beyond human mind comparison of what we can explain about that trinity but yet it's the trinity one times one times one is one yet there's three ones and that godhead has set forth my salvation god sending the son the son coming in obedience and the son suffering and dying and buried and arose from the grave and that holy spirit working in men's hearts to be drawn to god and to the son and when a man receives christ as his savior that holy spirit comes and dwells in that believer and guides and comforts that believer 
What a remarkable thing. Through him given from yonder glorious throne. That Holy Spirit, when he comes into a believer, comes from God's throne. Comes from God, is God. To thee be endless praise, for thou hast died. But thou, O Lord, through endless days adorn and magnify. We're supposed to lift up God. We're supposed to lift up Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be thankful for the Holy Spirit. We're not supposed to be looking at uh, stars and starlets and ball teams and, and whatever we have. Anything that is ahead of God is a idol. And thou shalt not have any idols. Thou shalt not worship anything of any likeness of man or animal. But God through the Son, through Jesus Christ. Crown him the Lord of years. You could not put a candle or candles on a cake for God. He's been as long as time has been for mankind since the time that God made Adam and sent him in the garden. And he's been eternity before that. Eternity before he set time when he said, let there be the sun, the moon, and the stars for seasons and times. Before that, there was eternity without time he's forever been. And there's coming a time that Time will stop and we'll be in eternity future. Eternity future will have no more sun, moon, for stars, for seasons, for time. There'll be no minutes, no hours, no months. As before when God made the sun, the moon, and stars. God is forever. How old is God? He's forever. He's eternal. Always is, always will be. Who was, who is, and who will be. Creator of the rolling spears. All hail the Redeemer. Creator, Redeemer. The one that made me is the one that suffered and died for me. The one that made me bought me back from Satan. By his blood. God's blood. Acts 20, 28. The praise and glory shall not fail. We get off into eternity, and when time is gone, and we are in New Jerusalem, and we are before the throne of God, the Father, the Almighty, and of, of Jesus Christ, the Lamb, forever, forever, will we join holy, 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 and sing praises to Jesus Christ. Forever. I include this. I don't know what the crown here with many crowns by the Roman Catholic is, but be careful. But this hymn has been changed to glorify the biblical Jesus. You do know that the Roman Catholic system has another Jesus that Paul speaks about. That Jesus is still nailed to the cross. My Jesus is seated, unnailed, at the right hand of God today. I don't eat Jesus. I don't drink Jesus. I'm not a cannibal. I'm a Christian. See, there you start with a C, cannibal. I start with a C, Christian. And right now, going on above our heads, north, right now, the Bible says, right now, those four and twenty-four elders are casting their crowns before God and the Son and the Lamb, and the the the, the beasts are crying out, holy. Holy, holy, right now. And we'll be there one day to hear it, to be part of it. All sport teams will be put down. Your player may be saved and may go into heaven, but it won't be about his team no more. It will not be about their number. It will not be about what they did. It will be all about what Jesus did. Crown him. And we're not even going to boast about our works for God. Those works that we do will be put into crowns that will be put on our head. And if you don't do nothing for God, you don't get no crowns. But crown Jesus for all the faithfulness, for all that he is and all that he's done for my soul. Kind of I've already said it's kind of 
I don't know how many words are here. And it remarks me that when we Christian life, Christian hymnals, biblical hymnals, supposed to be. And how many hymns do not even have the name Jesus? I, I, I look at the hymn, I look at the words, I know who's talking about. You can't find one place here to put Jesus. It's remarkable. How in the hymnals, Jesus is not there. But he's there, but he's not there. I'm not, in, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'm not ashamed to mention his name, Jesus Christ, my Savior. Some of these hymnals are. That's disturbing. I, I, I sing this in the church. I like to see what the other four verses are. But the seven I got in my book right now. Praise God. Like I said, these biblical truths of our hymns, they're not going to be all bad. They're not going to be all terrible. They're going to be some good ones. But then again, I want to show you things about King. I'm going to show you things about missing Jesus. I'm going to show you the truth. You know, a hymn is not a Bible. It never was. It can be wrong. Only the Bible is infallible. Only the Bible is correct 100%. There are hymns in here. Some of them will do. Some of them we won't do. The Holy Spirit says, P.U. That stinks. God says, that makes me vomit. Thank you.